If you're new to WordPress or you just haven't done much with dynamic data to this point, then I really think that this series of videos here that I've created is gonna be extremely valuable to you. Um, I know for myself, as soon as I understood what a custom post type was and all these other topics that we're gonna cover in this series, uh, it really changed the game for me as far as what I could do with WordPress and the types of projects that I could create. It made my life a whole lot easier too, which is uh, honestly, everybody wants that, right? So I wanna go over a couple things before we dive right into it. I'm gonna try to set expectations as much as possible. I'm gonna try to go over as much detail as possible. These videos will be long. I will be talking a lot about the different things that I have learned. I am trying to package it as nicely as possible. That may not happen perfectly. What I can promise you is that in every one of these videos, if you look down in the timeline of this and in the description as well, there will be chapters and I will make sure that I chunk those down as small as possible for the given topics that I'm talking about. So if you wanna watch it all the way through, go ahead. If you wanna skip around and see just the pieces that you're talking, you're, you're thinking about, maybe you know certain things already, don't know other things, wanna just watch those parts, be my guest, go ahead and do that. It'll link you right to those parts and you can watch those. Over the course of my career and in the WordPress community, I've had many people approach me as they've asked many different questions about dynamic data and things along those lines. I've tried to do my best to answer them in Facebook groups and different things. And I need one specific place for to send people that explains pretty much everything that I know on this topic of dynamic data and the power that it does provide. So that is also a main reason I'm making this series right here. On that same note, I make WordPress content like this all the time. So if you have a question, if I don't go over something enough, you need more clarification, leave a question down below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it either in the comments or in a subsequent video. Another thing I would encourage you to do, truthfully, is to go into a WordPress install for yourself and kind of work around and work through these problems with me, these different things, and kind of click around and see just to get a feel for what I'm talking about because that's what I'm gonna be doing here. I'm gonna be sharing my screen and showing you exactly the way that I navigate these different things, talking about them, some little tips here and there on the way that I use them. And I will disclaimer, big disclaimer right here, the way that I'm doing this is not the end all be all way. The My idea and my purpose with all this content, including this one, is to empower you guys to just give you a little bit more information at least than you already had, and then you can go watch other videos, you can do more projects, and you can learn from that. So don't take this as complete gospel. You may wanna do things differently, that is totally okay. But I'm gonna tell you how I do it, and hopefully you learn something along the way. Last thing I'm gonna say is that this is designed for people that build websites in WordPress, not necessarily developers, okay? So there's ways to do these types of things with code. You can look those up if you would like. That is not what I'm gonna be doing in this, uh, tutorial, in this tutorial series. What I am gonna be talking about though is all the different tools that you kind of can use. I'm not gonna be showing every single one either. This is not a review of every single custom post type and uh, you know advanced field plugin, okay? This is my stack that I'm gonna be using, but Again, the goal here is to understand the theory and the reasons you would use these types of things. Then you can watch subsequent videos, maybe of mine if I make more, or other creators, and you can see what the best tool for the job is, in your opinion, based on your experience. During this series, I'm gonna show you the ones that I use, uh, but uh, you're free to, again, use your own as well. The point of this, last time I'm gonna say it, is not a product review video. It is a understanding of how to use these concepts that can be created, modified, edited, used with different plugins. All right, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this for you. In WordPress, there is a lot going on. There is a lot of influences from the past. WordPress used to be a blogging platform, so there's some of the influences there. People have extended it heavily to work differently. There's some underlying, like again, technical stuff, development stuff that we're not gonna get heavily into. There's a lot of things that you can do with the platform, more than you probably think if you're watching this video and you're new to dynamic data. All of that being said, this is a list that I have comprised that is, I would not say an exhaustive list because I may think of more things, but this is a list of what I would say is a very good foundation. If you could understand everything on this list and how they all work together and what they are, you would be ahead of honestly, like probably 90% of the people in the WordPress community uh, because these are the blocks and the pieces and things that a lot of like more advanced projects and advanced websites kind of feed off of like we've said. so. Here's my recommendation to you. Take a screenshot of this and just kind of remember it. There will also be, again, timestamps in this video and like the titles of the next videos. We'll talk about each one of these. I'm not gonna talk about all of these in this video, but I think if you have the idea of these terms and then we can build upon them and talk about each one independently and how they all intertwine, 
because they do kind of intertwine. I'm trying to make it as building block as possible. Like one thing, you know, adds to the next, adds to the next. It's not completely possible. So I would just kind of look at this list here and kind of familiarize yourself with the terms, even if you don't understand what they are. The last disclaimer I will make is that WordPress is constantly evolving and constantly changing and people love, 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 love to make up names for things. So most of these terms are relatively ubiquitous and people uh, you know, agree that these are what these things are called, but just watch out for that because sometimes there are other things that kind of sound like the same thing or might have some of the same feature functionality. If we come across any of those, I will do my best to explain those to you, um, but these are pretty universal terms. All right, so let's start learning, and we gotta learn right at the top here with Page. I'm not gonna go through this all on this page. We're gonna go into WordPress, and we're gonna actually show you kind of what's going on, and I'm gonna give you examples and anecdotes and personal experience throughout this. Skip around if you don't wanna hear some of that stuff. Okay, so let's dive into this. The first thing that I wanna talk about is Pages, but real quickly, I am gonna talk about media and, co and comments just because we're gonna get those out of the way because this is what you would see on a fresh install of WordPress here. As I mentioned, WordPress was a blogging platform at its inception, still could be used for that. One of the main features of that could be comments. Not really super common nowadays because there's just other ways to you know, in, you know, uh, communicate on social media and things. But if you ever needed comments for a project, it is nice, it's baked in. If you never need comments, don't worry about it. It's just, you know, it's there. Um, you can turn it off in the settings, all that sort of stuff, we're not going into that. But the point is like, you're gonna see comments if you're brand new. It's outside the scope of what we're talking about here for the most part, okay. Media is also kind of outside the scope. We'll talk about it a little bit, but it's really just like kind of a full, like a, you know, a library of all of your images or videos or documents or whatever you want to put inside stored on your server, you know, in your, you know, WordPress install. Uh, and you can reference it. You can put pictures different places. If you want to upload an image directly to your website and display it, that's where you're going to do it. Uh, we will talk about it during the dynamic data pieces and all that sort of stuff, but it's not important as a menu item over here for most of the stuff we're gonna talk about. Let's talk about our first one, which is pages. So what is a page? I kind of lied when I said this was a, uh, like a fresh install of WordPress. There are, there's a couple things on here that I normally do, but let's talk about that. Why do I have about contact and home as, as set as new pages? Like they're, you know, I have three pages in here and that's currently it. Well, the reason is because pages, the simplest definition of it is that a page is something that there's kind of one of, it's static. It doesn't really change that much. It's not created based on other, again, dynamic data or something that is um, you know, being, being generated, uh, for lack of a better term, dynamically. Uh, you could have pieces of dynamic data within it, but mostly it's like you're gonna build a homepage and then you're gonna pretty much leave it there unless you want to actively change pieces of it uh, for the most part. Again, same thing with an about, same, t same thing with a contact page. Again, it would make more sense when you have other, you know, options at your disposal, but that's the simplest definition I can give you for you for a page right now. What I will say, this I think is an important point, um, the things that you are going to learn is not going to be, the, all these other things, custom post types and all that sort of stuff, templates and all that we'll get to from our list. You're not going to you're not just gonna be like, oh, I never need to make a page again. You absolutely still need pages. You just probably won't need as many as you may have had in the past. I'll give you some personal personal stories, anecdotes, things like that again, like I said. What I see a lot is people using pages way too often. They're using pages for things that are like, you know, possibly blog posts, possibly like, like all of your services if you're doing service-based business stuff. Um, you know, if you uh, just did anything where there's like a ton of the same type of content, right? I think as we start going through this, you're gonna be like, oh, that makes so much more sense. So if you have, you know, upwards of 50, 100 pages, there is a high, high likelihood that there is a more efficient and just a better overall way of handling and managing your content in the WordPress content management system, okay? So we'll leave it there because again, as you start to learn some of these other concepts, it's gonna make a ton more sense. And I would say very quickly. All right, so pages done. We kind of get the idea there. It's one of something, it's static. Let's keep moving on. Next item on this list is post. Okay, so what do we mean by post? Well, this is why I wanted to install a vanilla fresh version of WordPress because posts 
is staring you right in the face here, okay? So if we click on post, again, I have some data in here. I'll explain why as we continue to go, but we needed something in here just to kind of show you. Posts are, again, the origin of it was blog posts, okay? For the sake of everybody's sanity, okay, moving forward, I'm gonna tell you something and just believe it, maybe cross-reference it if you'd like. I always, I always like to tell people to do that. If you are gonna have a blog, like if you are gonna have a blog on your website, you're gonna use posts, okay? This little default thing until if WordPress ever d deletes it or whatever, then maybe maybe this is out of out of uh, uh, you know out of context then. But as long as that post is in there, if you're gonna have a blog, this is what you're gonna use for it. That is what this specific the OG post type, if you will, was designed to be. So do not fight that, okay? Again, it'll all make sense more, but don't fight that. Now, what you can see here is I have some sample posts in here, and I think it would be very interesting for us to click into here and kind of give an example of uh, kind of what's going on and, and what you can expect. The And another disclaimer I'll make here is the editor may change by the time you're watching this video. I know they're always changing this Gutenberg editor page experience, um, but it's something to, con it's something to always, uh, you know, just, just think about that. And um, it may... It may continue to change. So the things that I'm saying, maybe they move or something like that, but ultimately most of these concepts should stay the same. I'm gonna click back here and I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna show you a post that just has some sample data in it, and then I'm gonna show you a new post, okay? So if you clicked new post, let's say you had nothing on your website and you click new post, you're gonna have a couple elements to each post. Some of this is going to uh, carry over to custom post types and the other things we talk about, but right now we're talking about the default post type. It's called a post, okay? Very creative. You're gonna have a title. That's the first thing. If you're looking at a blog too, this is another thing, this is another good thing too. If you're looking at like a blog, get this is the whole point of dynamic data. Start thinking about what items in the back end, right, in the back end of this po post map to the items on the front end, okay? And that will really, really start to set you apart because you'll start to understand like really how you can utilize this dynamic data. I will show you some examples as we go, but let me let me talk about the back end here for a second. So you're gonna have a title. Then in here you're gonna be you're gonna you can you can do all sorts of block stuff. You can type, you can do like you can write like a whole blog post there with different types of blocks, right? The block editor. But overall, that whole section is generally it's, it can have different names, but let's just call it post content. Because if you're using a page builder, probably that's probably gonna be what you're, what you're gonna hear. But it's like post content, right? It is literally the post and is the piece that Gutenberg or WordPress core creates that you have in this section, post content, okay? Title, post content, got it. Those are two things, we'll call them fields for now, okay? So that's two things you gotta think about there. You can do a bunch of different other stuff, obviously in the block editor, you can change typography, all that sort of stuff. Not really kind of the, the point of what we're talking about here. If we click on post over here on the right, you can see a couple things. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more for you. Okay, so visibility, it's again, slightly outside the scope of this video, but like public, private, for just leave it on public for now, it's totally fine. Um, you can publish things differently. Um, template, single post, we're not there yet, we'll talk about that. And each one of these things are gonna have like a URL. That that's going to change depending on what you're doing here. There's things called permalinks, which we could talk about as well, but is slightly, again, more convoluted in, in what we're all talking about, but they're all going to have a URL as well attached to them. This is a really important thing to understand is that you, the, the, the general term of, of people is when they go to a URL, like doesn't matter what it is, just any sort of web, it, they literally call it a web page. Okay. The thing you have to understand is there's the terminology is always different from like the general public to WordPress people. And then even, like I said, within the WordPress community. So it doesn't always mean it's a page necessarily that you're going to. It just happens to be like, you know, just the ubiquitous web page, but everything obviously has a URL. Um, and we could talk about more as far as like how to change those types of things or whatever. Uh, but the point is that you're going to be able to kind of like adjust that as well. The main thing that you're adjusting though, this is an important point. The main thing that you're adjusting though, at this level, within you know the the post itself and I'll go over here to show you right so we have our title we have our post content the main thing that you're adjusting at this URL level within a post is the permalink but specifically what would also be referred to as the slug so in here you can see it's sample hyphen post hyphen one 
Well, down here you can see it's demo hyphen dynamic. That's just the, you know, the dev link here, right? Slash sample hyphen post hyphen one. So the slug, you've, you've, you've a title, right? Of your post, right? And then you have a permalink. They could be the same sort of, right? They could like literally say like sample post one or like sample post, like those are pretty close. But obviously a permalink can have spaces because it's, it's in a URL. And you can name it whatever you want. This is where you talk about maybe SEO and other stuff, again, outside the scope of this video. But that is like the actual permalink that you will see in the URL bar. While we're here, I'll talk about it real quick about the, the permalink structure. If you go back over to your WordPress dashboard and you come down to settings and permalinks, there are these options here, okay? I'm gonna make this very simple for you. Put it on post name and never touch it unless you have to. Uh, each one of these, you can kind of see your, your dev URL is gonna stay the same, right? Or your, you know, your URL, like your website name, .com, whatever is gonna stay the same. And then it changes. There's plain, there's day and name, you know, there's month and name, there's numeric. You can even do a custom structure. 99.9% .9 of the time, the recommended thing is just post name. Okay, so what that means is that at your at your main posts, the ones that we're talking about right now, it's just going to be slash blog post slug, like whatever it is, right? So again, with these posts, we're always doing that for blog posts. We're not using it for anything else. Blog posts, okay? If you're not using a blog, we'll talk about something else, right? If you've been trying to use this differently, we'll talk about it later. But that's going to be your permalink structure, and the way that you change what that is is again in the URL with the permalink slug, okay? So that's really important to understand as far as how posts work there. We'll cover a couple of these other topics here real quick. Some of them again overlap. Stick to the top of the blog, that means it's, it's a sticky post, okay? We're not really gonna even know what that means until we talk about some other things later because it's a little bit more of an advanced piece when we talk about querying, remember that, okay? Next one is author, so if you have multiple users on the, on the website, you can change that. Um, and then there's categories and tags. We're gonna skip those for right now because those are important. We'll come back to them. And then featured image. If I'm thinking about a standard blog post, right? Let's, let's take a step back for a moment. If you've ever been on a page, like a website that has a blog, what are the normal things that you, that you see on there? Like super standard. Most of the time it's gonna have a picture. That is called a thumbnail or in WordPress land, a featured image, okay? So that is what you wanna use for, it is designed to work like that. If you are building a blog, you're using posts, you're putting a featured image in there, you're putting a title, you're writing your post content, and that's pretty much, for the most part, all you need, okay? I will tell you one more other thing, that these are like default standard blog post fields in WordPress, and that is an excerpt. As you can see down here, it's optional. An excerpt would be like a preview to the post. For instance, if you've ever been on a blog and you see like a grid, right? Or a list of blog posts, you're normally gonna see that picture, you're gonna see the title, and then you might see a little bit of text that is previewing what that blog post is about. That is one way you can do it, the excerpt there. It's not the only way, it's evolved heavily since that excerpt thing was kind of created many years ago. You don't have to use it, but if you ever wonder what that is, that is what that is. It's like a preview of the blog, like post and the content there. The last thing we'll touch on here real quick, just because we're here, is discussion. That's allowing comments and ping back and ping backs and track backs. You don't know what those are, don't, just don't touch them. Um, if you, again, like we talked about, if you want to turn off comments, you can do that in the main settings. You can do that on post, set, uh, post by post basis, a little outside the scope of exactly what we're talking about here. But that is kind of the, basically the overview of posts, okay? So what did we learn here about posts? We learned a couple different options. We learned the, the, the basic fields of what a post is. And this is the native posts, custom, the posts type. It's really ridiculous, the naming conventions, but it's the native post type. It's posts. It's in every version of WordPress. It is literally It was literally built for blogging and 99.9% .9 of people are gonna tell you to just use it for blog posts. If you are not using blog posts on your website, you're probably not gonna use that you may use some things that we talk about next. So if we go back to our list, posts, we're good, we got it. If you have any questions, in the comments down below. So we're good on posts. Here's where I'm gonna inject some lived experience and some kind of like gold nugget information for you to save you a literal ton of time, okay? 
Not many people talk about this when they talk about all these different types of things. And I think that this is probably the most best, the best illustration of how you would actually go about this if you were just navigating WordPress because it's how I went about it, okay? So I'm gonna tell you a quick story. Bear with me, skip ahead if you want, but I think this is important. When I was first starting out with WordPress, I literally did a job for $500, okay? And it was a big website and it was really, actually, I would love to do it today, but it was a really interesting project. And it was basically, essentially the idea was a website that had a ton of different types of content on it and you could download different things and you could view different stuff. And the, the client literally came to me and said, hey, I want a website that has brochures, flyers, announcements, white papers, uh, blog posts, and just random like other download things. And I thought, hmm, that's really interesting, that's really cool. And I was racking my brain on how to do this, okay? And I went ahead and I downloaded a bunch of different things and I was like, how am I gonna make this work? To call back to what we just talked about, I actually ended up using, trying to use post for literally everything, Re regular posts, okay? And I did a lot of weird stuff that I'm not even gonna tell you what, I'm, what I did because it is completely wrong and I would never ever recommend it. The reason I'm bringing this story up is because it's extremely pertinent and it was really the thing that unlocked my understanding of everything that we're gonna talk about moving forward from here. But the piece that gets left out a lot and I still think it's it's kind of important, is because you may be in this spot right now and you might not understand exactly why it's limiting in a sense. There is this concept that I literally just came up with, this name, because I don't I don't I don't know if anybody ever calls it anything else. If a third party post type, what what does that mean? Well, I'm gonna show you what that means because this is the way that you enter into this arena of custom post types, most likely. As you can see on the dashboard now looks a little different. There's some things popped up here. You know how they got there? It's because I went into off camera. I went into plugins. I went in to add new plugin and I downloaded a few plugins for us. Now, quick interjection. WordPress is lovely because it's open source and everybody can add to things and everybody can build like awesome plugins that do a lot of cool things. It is also kind of, you know, like scary in certain ways because there's a lot of things that like you can very quickly get yourself spun up, but also like extremely limited depending on if you know what you're doing or not. And again, nothing against these plugins specifically. I'm just gonna explain to you what these are, how they are useful, but also how they could be limiting depending on what you're trying to do. So forget about Gen Engine right now. We'll talk about that later, but you can see these ones highlighted in blue. They are active now. I went ahead and installed them, activate them. And this is what I did. I'm gonna explain to you exactly what you may have done or what somebody, you know, like doesn't understand what custom post types are. Let's say that you want to build a website for yourself or your business. Let's say that maybe you wanna display projects or a portfolio on that website. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over to, this is what I did, right, when I, when I was young. I was like, add plugins, and I said, search plugins, and I said, projects, or like portfolio or something, right? And you can see projects, and this is the one, one of the ones I downloaded, portfolio and projects. That seems pretty promising. I mean, that's kind of cool, right? Like we could we could download, uh, if I could spell, we could do like a portfolio as well. I think there's a different one. I did visual portfolio photo gallery. You get the idea, okay? I wanted a portfolio of projects. I didn't know how to make that happen. There's a ton of plugins in here. Like, can we do something with those? So I downloaded it. So now we have a few in here. We'll talk about these, these second ones in a second, but portfolio and projects in this vis visual portfolio, post images, all that sort of stuff. So now we have a ton more stuff on the left, ha left uh, hand side of our screen here. So if we click into Visual Portfolio, okay, starting to see what's taking place here, right? Compare this view to this view. I know there's data here, but compare it a little bit. There's a thumbnail column, there's a title, there's an author, there's categories, tags, right? So we have this little interesting situation going on, right? So, okay, let's keep digging. This was a plugin, remember that, that we just downloaded and now we have a portfolio. Okay, so we click into Add New and we can see that it's a similar experience, right? Like we have like a post editor and obviously some of this is because of Gutenberg is just like a similar experience regardless of what you're building. But there are some other options on the side here to take note of. There's post format now, which is image standard or video. This is that plugin injecting these different options in here for us. And I'm sure there's a bunch of other things that you can kind of, you know, whittle away and do. 
but that's just the first piece of it, right? Okay, so you got like these saved layouts, all this sort of stuff, all from a free plugin. Really cool, but also, again, you gotta know what you're doing. All right, let's click on portfolio down here. What is portfolio? Okay, well, again, now I have another view with like titles, portfolios, like pictures, all that sort of stuff. Okay, well, what happens if I add a portfolio? Okay, now this is interesting. So we have a title. We don't have our Gutenberg editor anymore. We have a different view. We have just like a title up here. We have a, a you know WYSIWYG editor where we can like type stuff in and format data and all that sort of stuff. Oh, and what do we have down here? We have portfolio link and we have a portfolio gallery of images and then slider settings and all this sort of stuff. And then we also have categories that are specific to this, I would call it a third party post type. So, and actually, if you really wanna get technical up here, you can see post type equals WPOS portfolio, underscore portfolio. Okay, so this is what I mean by third party post types, right? What this means is it's not a post, but it's something that you wanna display which, I, which is lovely because you took the step way better than me the first time that I did it. And you took the step to think, I don't wanna put these in my posts. I don't wanna mix these with my blogs. I wanna put these somewhere else. So I'm gonna type in portfolio, I'm gonna type in projects, and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna download this plugin. I'm gonna put the portfolio things in there. This will work, okay? This will work. You can put your, you can put your project in here, portfolio, like, oh, we did so-and-so's website or we did this graphic design piece. You can do all this. You, there's ways to show it on the front end and all that sort of stuff. This plugin is probably fantastic for certain people that want to use it, okay? I'm going to leave that there for a second because it is definitely limiting because you can't you can't change it. What happens, for instance, real quick, if you want, you know, like, first of all, any of these features or some of these features are pro and everything like that, and there's a bunch more premium settings and all that sort of stuff. There's these custom fields down here, which we'll talk about, but these are not, like, it's not really the same thing as what we're going to talk about. There's... There's differences there, but my point is it's limiting in the fact that you can't do more when you need to do more. So it's a little, it's a little interesting there. Let's talk about a couple more examples and let's keep moving. Easy property listings. Okay. So there's now there's one called property. Well, let's say you're a real estate agent. You want to put your houses online. You want to put your listings online. Okay. So you go to add new. Now you have like a title or an address, or whatever you want to put in there. You have a heading, you have, you know, an office ID listing agent. You have all these different things, right? And this is kind of cool. Cause like you can manage all this sort of stuff, but, and you don't have to like do any of this. You were just able to install this real quick. It's still a little limiting, but okay. But it's another idea, right? It's another example of a third party up here in the URL bar. Third party created custom post type is really what I would call this, okay? You don't need to understand any of this necessarily right now. You don't need to ever use this if you don't want to, okay? Because I'm gonna show you how to do it all yourself exactly for what you wanna do. If you wanna use these plugins, I will say though, go ahead and use them, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad about these plugins. I'm just telling you that there will come a time where if you keep doing this long enough, you will need to expand on this on what these give you, okay? Last one here is downloads, which is another interesting one. It's like, oh, well, that project that I had, the guy wanted to you know, have downloads and things like that. Well, I need to somehow manage these downloads, right? And there's, there is different aspects to all of these types of things, right? Like it's not, it's not a one size fits all, but there, there are ways to make WordPress work for you the way that you want it to work rather than relying on just plugins, which again, plugins are fantastic, but we're gonna talk about how to go further than that. So to, to finish up here on the third-party plugins, they are an asset. They're a beautiful thing to have in WordPress. But if you want to go further, they're going to limit you because they were created by somebody else, right? This one, WPDM Pro, okay? So those are third-party plugins. Those are third-party custom post types created by plugins, third-party post types. I think this is the best place to end this video. It gives you just enough to understand what you can do as a beginner kind of in the, in the WordPress space. The next video is your great jumping off point for actually talking about CPTs, everything they do, everything you can do with them. So that is the end of this video. The next video will be linked up in the top right hand screen, right hand of your screen with a card. Click that. Let's keep going.